Hello everyone, unofficial tour guide of Sweden here. Today we're gonna go over quite a bit of staggering, obscured sources. And if you're wondering why this cast is on my hand, you've clearly not been notified of all my uploads. So make sure to check out the video description and I'll hook you up. Now let's get started. Official document reveals no intensive care granted to anyone over 80 or any person over 60 with multiple diseases. I predicted this when I made a video a month ago saying that Sweden is sacrificing their elderly to save money and get rid of welfare recipients. Now the government itself got me confirmed. When this document was exposed, they tried covering their asses by saying, oh, this is just for when intensive care units run out. But that's a lie, given that these two guys lost their dad, even though there was intensive care units available. They claim this document only applies to Karolinska Institute, the biggest, most well-respected hospital in Sweden and Europe that's located in Stockholm. But that's a pretty vague claim, given that this happened outside of Stockholm. And some people still act surprised surprised that Sweden has twice as many deaths per capita than Norway, Finland, and Denmark. I'm sure some hospitals in Sweden do accept older patients, but what they do with recommendations like these is just hope for the doctors to kill as many people as possible. That way you can claim humanism and personal responsibility while getting away with murder. Of course, some doctors feel uncomfortable doing this, while others clearly don't. According to numerous doctors in Stockholm, people who could have had good prospects of making it are blatantly denied intensive care even when there's many units standing freely available. And many old patients are outright denied hospital care even though there's many intensive units standing empty. When medical officer Hans Buman was interviewed by state media, he said it's more rule than exception to let elderly corona patients die in nursing homes where they may or may not be given oxygen. Elderly homes in Gävleborg County are now refusing oxygen gas to their old corona patients, while doctors are being instructed to deny oxygen as well, and instead administer morphine, which only makes it harder to breathe so they can die drugged up. A fresh report from Britain showed a third of 80-year-olds given intensive care make it, but in the welfare haven of Sweden, they are much less prioritized. This woman was left to die in torment at her nursing home because they refused to take her to the hospital. Her daughter was shocked and inquired why, but all they said is, we're not gonna do that because she's too old. So she was left gasping for air all night until she died. Her daughter tried having her tested for corona, but there was neither time nor staff available. And until that became possible, this happened. The only health care she got at that nursing home was an aspirin and leaving the window open. Then they claimed, there's nothing more we can do. And since they refused to test her, she's not even gonna be included in the statistics of corona deaths in Sweden. So isn't that convenient? The daughter is quoted saying, they let my mom suffer for so many hours without oxygen, nor hospital care. She worked all her life, paid taxes, and this is the thanks she got. She was down to 60% breeding capacity. It was horrible for me and my sister to see how much she suffered her last 24 hours in life." End of quote. The highest taxes in the world shouldn't give you a healthcare system that's worse than Russia and depends on pure luck. Now, here's a few facts that aren't being discussed enough. Sweden is at least a week behind on their statistics. Someone who died two weeks ago gets registered first now. In America, anyone suspected of dying of corona gets registered, but Sweden only registers those tested positive at the time of death. Very bureaucratic, very narrow. Sweden is generally unwilling to test both people and hospital staff, so it actually seems our numbers are too low at the moment rather than too high. Not to mention there's no nursing home staff using gloves, sanitizer, or protective masks, because those are the official guidelines assigned by our government. This article I read in the beginning really wasn't the first indication of what's to come. By March 15th, our National Board of Health and Welfare were already deciding who's gonna be abandoned to die. We have such insane deficit of crucial public resources, they're gonna deny care to people based on age, multiple health conditions, and social situation. What Whatever that means. To give you a practical example, a 35 year old man went to the emergency in America after a trip to Wuhan. He had a fever and a few symptoms indicating pneumonia. They gave him extensive testing, x rays, etc. But in Sweden, 
he would have been sent home, according to our guidelines. Demand's condition got worse, which made the Americans put in more efforts and more therapy. Whereas in Sweden, he would have been left untreated and suffered in home quarantine. Then if he died, he wouldn't be considered a corona death because technically he never got tested. This is how the Swedes operate. Define everything in absurd ways so that you can maintain your global image of being a utopia. They constantly go on about how inhuman and capitalist America's healthcare system is, while they can't even afford oxygen gas to their dying pensioners. While ambulances in Stockholm are forced to drive critical patients around for hours because there's no room, there's no resources, despite the fact that we pay some of the highest taxes in the world. An infection nurse working here contacted me since no mainstream outlet was interested in publishing her story. She wanted to let me know that she's been trying to lobby hospital managers for weeks to arrange labor that can make protective gear, since Sweden has a huge deficit. But the managers either ignore her or respond with vague answers, all while their staff keeps spreading the contagion. I quote, this is nothing short of a scandal, as I shouldn't have to pay thousands out of my own pocket to make protective gear that these private hospitals can easily afford themselves." End of quote. Luckily, she finally managed to arrange a production program with prison inmates who wanted to help out. So prisoners are more empathic than some of Sweden's hospital managers. Even when 22 experts in virology object to the government's human sacrifice, they're surrounded by media outlets labeling them alarmist nation traitors who are embarrassing our utopian society. Swear to God, this is the China of Europe. In 2004, our former Minister of Health described old people as a mountain of flesh that's gonna be a burden in the future, which says everything about how our establishment view people. Anyone who no longer can bring in taxes is disposable, a liability, and an obstacle. Instead of sending people to available intensive care units, a major hospital in Gothenburg, and one of the largest in Sweden, is setting up these tents where they sedate people with dog medicine, since there's no human sedatives available. And doctors are now warning that the respirators used there are very old and very outdated to the point of being nearly useless. Yet people are left gasping for air and many don't even get access to oxygen. Just morphine, which only makes it harder to breathe. Over a third of elderly homes in Stockholm are infected now with many people dead because Sweden instructed staff not to use protection and they didn't even close visitations until April 1st, after hundreds of deaths had occurred. But when interviewed by foreign media, our state expert claims that Sweden has done everything possible to stop these elderly deaths from happening, which is obviously a complete lie. He's also claimed that this is just a common flu and only 80 year olds will need intensive care when every third case of the ICU is neither old nor previously ill. We can now see there's a good amount of deaths in the 50s and even some teenagers. Sweden could learn from countries like South Korea and Hong Kong who've handled this way better, but they'd rather be obsessed with their global reputation. Elderly homes are now refusing to give their corona infected oxygen gas, arguing that their staff isn't educated enough to administer it. So instead, they're just drugging people up with morphine and leaving them to die slowly and painfully. Clearly, the woman and daughter I mentioned earlier aren't an isolated case. So do you understand why I've been calling this mass murder yet? These are the sickest patients we're talking about here. Yet when they seek hospital care, they get stashed up in tents where there's no water, no drainage, everyone is crammed together, and they're doing this despite there being many fully functional intensive care units standing empty. Their excuse is that they want to keep hospitals free from COVID-19, which is beyond absurd, because what do you think intensive care units are for? A chief doctor objected here saying that this is a sick experiment playing with people's lives and that there's no real reason not to give people the best care possible. But clearly Sweden thinks there is. This same hospital banned their nurses from wearing face protection and it's supposed to be one of the most prestigious in Europe. And what do Swedish people do during all this? 
They just party as usual. Since the corona crisis, Swedes increased their outdoor activities with 43%. Shopping mall and cafe visits dropped with 77% in Germany, whereas Sweden has only cut down with 24%. In one city, hospital managers told everyone else to stay at home during the crisis, but went out to the pub themselves. When caught, they told the media it was a stupid thing to do, but no, it's outright psychopathic in its selfishness. If this is what the people working with risk groups act like, you can imagine the sheer stupidity and incompetence of the average Swede. And during this entire time, 87% of Swedes have been the most worried about the economy. So the most progressive, humanist, leftist utopia on earth is the most selfish, greedy, shitty stereotype of capitalism? And this is the country where solidarity is the number one buzzword. But you'll read headline after headline about how people are suffering, and then just go, nah, the economy is more important. Now let's party! You gotta fight for your right to, to murder! Snotty millennials are writing debate articles in our biggest papers, demanding their right to celebrate graduation, since everyone else is partying anyway, while preschool staff is being scolded by Swedish parents, even threatened for telling them to keep their kids home when they're sick. A Swedish professor in clinical bacteriology argued that schools should be kept open because, and I quote, who has the energy to stay at home with their kids? Well, that's feminism for you. Conservatives have kids kids because they understand the joy of family, whereas feminists have kids because they think of them as little pets that are there to feed their egos. Doesn't make for very dedicated parents. The abnormal amount of single parent households here is why they've been refusing to shut down schools, because babysitters aren't really a thing in Sweden, and everyone has to be a strong, independent power pussy that can prove men wrong, so they're unable to stay home with their kids in times of crisis. That's great, Sweden. In the middle of this crisis, tens of thousands of Swedes still insisted taking their ski vacations, even when their kid gets sent home from school for being sick. And even old people are mingling in crowds because they've been raised to believe that social democrats are trustworthy, and have done so much good for Sweden. While the media is tipping people about nightclubs that keep open despite corona. Well that's interesting. I remember this exact magazine trying to deplatform me because they didn't like my opinion on Gamergate. You really don't have a clue what the definition of social danger is, do you? Only 4% of Swedish people are willing to take their parents in when they become old, widowers, and unable to take care of themselves. So that explains a lot. In true Marxist spirit, you find the family unit oppressive. Woo! Cultural socialism means subsidizing your empathy to the state and expecting other people to take care of your family. But then they die because you're self-obsessed metros. Woo! Can you, like, keep dating and having sex despite social distancing? You're basic bitch. Last weekend, police made a statement saying, we could easily see numerous pubs in Stockholm allowing far above the recommended amount of guests. Swedish people were instructed to act responsible and behave like adults. And this is how peace-damaged adults act. It is beyond insane how naive and cynical people are here. Nobody's wearing face masks. They look at you like a freak if you do. Nobody's keeping six feet distance. You think spring break millennials are bad? I have the coronavirus, that's why I don't have a voice. <laughs> so clean the mic after this, are you welcome? Okay? could sue them for copyright because this is the original birthplace of the dumb blonde stereotype. Prove me wrong, bro. Sweden is the only country outside of China to produce whistleblower doctors who have no other option but to turn to international media outlets to get heard. But it falls flat by how ignored they are in their home country, where they're simply dismissed as alarmist. Over 2,000 doctors and virus experts have signed a protest list, but they're dismissed as nation traitors, being described as a shame for Sweden. Because in Sweden, reputation matters more to people 
than saving lives. That's how it's been when we're importing rapes. That's how it's gonna be with a pandemic. Swedes really can't handle freedom under responsibility. Very few people keep a distance at a supermarket like Ica, for example. But once they reach the register, they are happy to stand at the dots indicating where you're supposed to stand and keep your distance. Most Swedes operate pretty much like Rain Man, so you really need someone to clearly point with their entire hand and make clear, clear guidelines. That is so true, I don't even know what to do with it. Do note, however, that a Swedish woman is saying this, and I have the utmost respect for Swedes who go against the grain. They might be a minority, but minorities can make all the difference. Think of the nurses going the extra mile for their patients, or the working class that are delivering to people's houses voluntarily, respecting the risk groups instead of just considering them expendable, along with the many Swedes who at least tried donating medical supplies. These people have a genuine understanding for Swedishness in tradition, as opposed to what state-mandated PC culture has done to Swedishness for the past decades. Sweden's former state expert showed up on British TV to argue why lockdowns are bad, saying, this is just a flu, so you can expect about 12,000 deaths, to which the journalist replied, we've already had 13,000 with the lockdown. One politician traveled to Stockholm with the sole intent to be infected, and when a journalist asked him, but you could infect others and it could have serious consequences, like a typical Swede, he replied, I don't see that connection. I haven't done anything wrong. Stockholm is close to herd immunity anyway. <laughs> Yikes, what a bug chaser. Like many Swedes, he believes this because the public health agency said so in a report that immediately got withdrawn in 24 hours because it's dangerously stupid wrong. But can you tell how eager they are to impress the whole world with their unique quirkiness? You're a basic bitch. Then to top it all off, you got this New Zealander talking about how surreal Sweden is. On one hand, it's comfortable being able to go wherever you want. On the other, she'd never want her parents to live here right now. When a classmate boastfully asked her, aren't you glad to be in Sweden right now? She was left speechless. I understand every nation has a certain percentage of spoiled human waste who doesn't take a pandemic seriously, but imagine if your whole country acted like spring break thoughts. That's what I'm forced to deal with here. So given the shadow ban problem I've been faced with recently, I really need you to share this video and click a like so it's bumped up in algorithms. I'm sitting here watching a disaster unfold and I can't get heard. Whenever I try getting people to take this seriously on my social media, they just call me a whiny conspiracy theorist. I'm surrounded by NPCs who think our government is the best thing ever. Trust ratings have even improved with 18% since the crisis started. So now 44% of Sweden has full trust in our government's way of handling this. And look where that got. Then I see Bloomberg publishing an article saying this. Part of Sweden's approach relies on having access to one of the world's best functioning healthcare systems. At no stage did Sweden see a real shortage of medical equipment or hospital capacity. And tents set up as emergency care facilities around the country have mostly remained empty. This kind of lazy journalism is why people are losing trust in the mainstream media. So it's a real tragedy that YouTube would rather recommend your videos to people than mine. Why don't you interview someone choking to death due to their lack of oxygen gas instead of blindly citing the politician trying to make our government look good. No shortage of equipment. So that's why our biggest hospital are using raincoats from amusement parks as protective gear. That's why most hospitals are nearly out of crucial supplies like face masks. That's why they made it classified information how much supplies there are left. All while Swedish bureaucracy is making sure anyone who wants to help with donating supplies can't, because regulations state it's not safe enough. Medicinal stockpiles were considered outdated and unmodern by our politicians, so they were sold out. At one point, we had 7 million face masks stockpiled, but Sweden decided to burn them all up because they were considered unnecessary, since our future consists of peace and stability. Kumbaya! They gave our field hospitals away to other countries, and socialist ministers insisted it's pointless to stock up on protective gear for hospitals, as well as other crucial supplies. Not to mention the privatization of pharmacies done by Sweden's neocon right. The resources that are desperately needed in hospitals right now are turned into a paycheck for stock owners instead. Both left and right 
deserve to go to prison once this is all over. Because in addition to their personal greed, their open border policies have created a huge public sector deficit. Did you seriously think mass migration from third world countries was gonna be profitable? Two million people in 30 years and you think that's gonna work out? For the longest time you've been able to read how over half of non-Europeans are long-term unemployed. 94% of migrants from the refugee crisis are on welfare. But when Sweden believe that money grows on trees, they'll just slap an ugly label on you and ignore all the facts. Our political elite can easily whip up 500 billion to spend on banks, 300 billion to big companies, 100 billion to the UN. But there's no mouth protection, sanitizers, or protective outfits for nurses working with old people. For 10 years time, different departments and infection doctors have been warning about the lack of supplies and how globalist Sweden is making themselves too dependent on import of crucial supplies. And all the politicians responsible can do is say that nobody saw this coming. Even I saw this coming from my cum stained basement! And while planned surgeries are being cancelled all over hospitals, breast augmentations and liposuctions are being carried out as normal. Oh, how Swedish. Always that obsession with exterior. So it's really no exaggeration to say that goatsy sloppy journalism like this is letting politicians get away with murder. Brazilian gangs are doing more to protect the public than Sweden is right now. Sweden has no strategy. They've done nothing to protect risk groups. They're refusing to share their data with the public, how many people they expect dead and so on. This has made it impossible for professionals to make informed decisions as well as citizens in general. So stop spreading stupid myths about Sweden. There is zero evidence that people who develop antibodies become immune. Gambling with people's lives and denying them oxygen so they choke to death for 24 hours straight is not a strategy. Lacking basic resources is not a strategy. Even if this herd immunity thing would prove to work out, it would have happened through blind luck at the expense of way too many unnecessary human sacrifices. There is no Swedish competence here. And it would be genuinely disgusting if they end up getting credit when all they've done is treat their citizens worse than livestock. In times of crisis and insecurity, you're supposed to play it safe. Instead, the whole country is acting like teenagers on spring break. That's not a strategy. That's just making it embarrassingly obvious your country hasn't been to war for 200 years. You make ancient Rome look modest. During our highest number of deaths, Swedish state media go out and, of course, protect the same government that gives them funding. They claim deaths are getting lower and lower and that we're close to reaching herd immunity. Then back this up with a false graph. Only 40 to 50 people died during April 14th and 15th. But the truth is the complete opposite. Twice that many people died on April 15th, hitting a new record, which immediately got broken the next day with 94 deaths in a day. And this was just for Stockholm. Fast forward a few days later, our establishment started claiming that the curve had flattened. Then Sweden beats Norway's entire death toll in just one day. And I'm reading this while it's revealed that numerous bus drivers in Stockholm have died from corona, but they refuse to test any of their employees. Meaning one million people who use public transit are at risk for being infected. But clearly that's the way Sweden likes it. Because the more people die, the more the government can save money. So they can keep claiming what a utopia we are. And this is the same state media that gets 8 billion in our tax funding every year. Maybe that's why we can't afford to help people. Along with feminist period art, state funding of leftist magazines, welfare to ex-politicians, research about racism, political projects that amount to nothing. Sweden is giving 20 million to Africa so they can have condoms against corona. The list goes on and on, so let's not make this a 50 minute video, okay? I am so grateful that Trump called Sweden out on their abuse of our citizens. Nobody in this country cares. We have to look across the Atlantic Ocean to get some empathy. 
And our state expert is such a moron, he doesn't even know what per capita is. Yes, Sweden does have more deaths than New York per capita. Anyone can look this up. For this reason, I am truly grateful that international media from all political sides are now grouping together to gangbang Sweden over its Nazi-inspired stupidity. The most progressive utopia in the world could might as well be running a eugenics program given how much they've allowed the virus to spread out and win. I am, once again, seeing my country become a global laughing stock, but this time it wasn't done by me and it's over something genuinely dangerous. So I feel like I'm living through a zombie movie. Our foreign minister recently gathered a press conference to let everyone know that it's a myth that life goes on as normal in Sweden. As of the date this article is being published, crowds of 50 people is still allowed, nobody has said anything about social distancing, and all you have to do to understand that this is a minister of propaganda is look out your window. British journalist living in Sweden talks about dropping his kids off as normal in a busy schoolyard, while a journalist friend of his invites him to a Friday after work party. Movie theaters, gyms, and shops remain open. Parks and recreational areas are packed with groups enjoying the spring sunshine. And those who fall ill with corona symptoms need only wait two days after they feel well again before returning to work or school. Instead of the common sense, globally recommended 14 days. Another point of complete retardation with our government is their insisting corona isn't contagious unless you have symptoms while every other country is acting on the complete opposite, since you're contagious four days before developing symptoms. But this is the guy that 76% of Swedes show blind trust towards, according to a recent poll. And Sweden's biggest media are shamelessly praising Tegnell for his calm, saying we should make his birthday into a national flag day. He should be allowed to go on a spa vacation for being so awesome. His knowledge and calm is a safe bosom for us Swedes. One guy even got a tattoo as a tribute, because that's how convinced the Swede is of his government government superiority. Swedish people are such metrosexual elitists, they're still stuck in the idea that they're the best country on earth and everyone needs to learn from them. Well they do, just not like you imagined. As usual, you're the warning, Sven. Not the ideal. And then we have the conspiracy tards whining about a police state. If your definition of a dictatorship is being forced to stay inside for a month, where you can have anything ordered to your house and endless amounts of entertainment and education opportunities online, then you're not only a social parasite, but you also have the political expertise of a cam whore. You're a basic bitch. You people leave me comments about how smart Sweden is for not caving into a police state by letting the elderly who built this country choke to death. I don't know, what sounds more reptilian overlord to you? Trying to protect as many people as possible? or treating your people like a crazy experiment, not caring if they die. I see nearly every Swede repeating state propaganda like a parrot. Oh, but the real danger is the rumors that arise and how it affects our economy. No, it isn't. A lockdown would ruin the economy and kill even more people in the long run. No, it wouldn't. And you can't even explain why you think that? That didn't even happen during the 2008 global recession, which Sweden handled quite nicely, actually. Suicide rates remained flat. We've already surpassed the amount of people dead from that economic turndown with this current pandemic. If enough people die, the economy suffers regardless. Not even during the Great Depression did suicides climb as high. Three years after it started, 23,000 people took their own lives. That was the peak. Then it dropped to the normal level that happened before the Depression started. Trump is taking a page out of Andrew Yang's book and offering universal basic income as a temporary measure to prevent another depression, while socialist Sweden is too poor to be able to offer that because that's what happens when you spend our taxes on nonsense. Austria's conservative government are giving up their salaries for a month and donating the money to organizations fighting the outbreak. Do you see hyper smart effective progressive Sweden doing anything like this? If you look up any study related to mental illness and economic turndown,
grounds, it clearly states offering mental health services and help to the unemployed is what keeps suicides down. This is what combats this development. So maybe you could focus on what overall better policies could be implemented instead of just suggesting mass human sacrifice on a whim. Several European countries who had strong support for people who lost their jobs were spared from the 2008 recession suicide increase. Sweden and Austria counting as two. Sweden is supposed to be a functional welfare state, that's why their suicide statistics weren't affected at all during the 2008 crisis, but the same social welfare structure that prevented that has slowly been sabotaged ever since by both social democrats and right-wing moderates who destroyed it through open borders. And now our public institutions, and especially our psych wards, are a complete joke. Trust someone with experience, okay? So. You don't get to argue we can't afford this while trusting the same government that made that happen and absolving them of all these consequences. For 20 years straight that social democrats and moderates were hollowing out our society, you didn't give a shit about the economy. And now you're blindly repeating their arguments to cover up for their mistakes at the expense of old people choking to death. Don't pretend to know anything about the economy. A recent study drawing lessons from the Spanish flu pandemic, which killed a third of the world's population at the time, concluded that quick and effective aggressive measures shows no adverse economical effects over the medium term. Businesses and economy can bounce back once this is all over. People who died can't bounce back. What don't you get about that? And don't be surprised if Swedes end up trying to erase history like they always do. This foreign article writes, During a period of hysteria, Tegnell was wildly hailed as a hero for his calm and seemingly scientific focus. This was a widely held view because in consensus-oriented Sweden, no other views were taken seriously until death rates started creeping up. The Swedish government and the Swedish health agency are no longer fighting for glory. Now they're fighting to get away without fatal wounds to their reputation. At least domestically, they might be able to pull it off. And I believe they will, because this country has now proven to be dangerously retarded beyond all reasonable doubt. There is nothing positive to say here. We need help. Please spread the word.